Welcome to module 2.5, confirming SARS-CoV-2 reinfection with whole genome sequencing. This presentation is a part of the COVID-19 Genomic Epidemiology Toolkit from CDC's Office of Advanced Molecular Detection. My name is Dr. Megan Crumpler, and I am the Laboratory Director at the Orange County, California Public Health Laboratory. In this module, we will present a case study that demonstrates how whole genome sequencing can be used as an investigative tool to identify cases of true reinfection. Be sure to check out the toolkit's other modules, which include a combination of case studies and training materials to help you get started supplementing epidemiology with genome sequence data. SARS-CoV-2 reinfection is thought to be a rare event and may be due to waning immunity to the virus over time. A study published in December 2020 identified 243 out of 133 266,000 laboratory confirmed cases that had one or more positive tests at least 45 days after the first positive test. On further investigation of these 243 cases, strong evidence for reinfection was found for 54 or 22%. Based on these findings, the risk of reinfection was estimated at 0.02% and the reinfection incident rate was 0.36 per 10,000 person weeks. CDC's common investigation protocol for suspected SARS-CoV-2 reinfection prioritizes one, persons with or without COVID-19-like symptoms who have a positive test more than 90 days after their initial infection or illness, and two, persons with COVID-19-like symptoms 45 to 89 days after initial infection or illness. Genomic sequencing of paired specimens is recommended to confirm reinfection. A link to the CDC protocol is included here and on the toolkit webpage. In the case we present here, a 32-year-old man who had resided at two separate homeless shelters in June and October 2020 was found to have a COVID-19 reinfection. This person's first infection was identified in June 2020 during a facility-wide serial testing program at Shelter A, after a staff member was reported to have tested positive for COVID-19. When tested, our case individual had symptoms consistent with COVID-19, including fever, sore throat, cough, and headache. He recovered and did not require hospitalization. This person's second infection occurred during an outbreak at another facility, Shelter B, in October 2020. As before, he was tested along with all shelter staff and residents after another resident was reported to have tested positive. Although he was symptomatic at the time, he once again recovered without hospitalization. Case investigators recognized that this patient met the criteria for investigation for reinfection because it had been more than 90 days since the person's initial infection. As part of routine SARS-CoV-2 surveillance in Orange County, California, whole genome sequencing is performed on all positive specimens that are tested at the public health lab that meet specific technical criteria for whole genome sequencing. It's important to note that some specimens from an outbreak may not be eligible for sequencing if, for example, they have a high cycle threshold, CT values, or other features predictive of poor sequence quality. On this slide, we have a phylogenetic tree of various SARS-CoV-2 sequences in Orange County calculated with next strain. Focusing your attention on the two highlighted branches in blue boxes, you can see that the June and October sequences from our case individual are genetically distinct. The June 2020 specimen falls into clade 20A and the October 2020 specimen falls into clade 20G. Let's take a closer look at a direct comparison of the sequence data. As shown on the previous slide, the two specimens fall into different clades as determined by next clade, 20A and 20G. Their Pango lineage assignments are also different. The June specimen is B.1 and the October specimen is B.1.2. Examining the specific amino acid substitutions in these two sequences, we saw that both contain the spike D14G and the non-structural protein 12 P323L mutations. 
Overall, the October sequence contained many more mutations relative to the Wuhan who won reference sequence than the June sequence. This is to be expected, given that the virus continues to mutate over time. These observed genetic differences in conjunction with epidemiologic data suggested that this was indeed a true reinfection. We had further evidence that these infections in the case patient were distinct because each was part of a larger outbreak. Shelter A experienced an outbreak from May to July when 19 residents and seven staff were infected. Shelter B had an outbreak from mid-October to early November when 14 residents and one staff were infected. The public health lab was able to retrieve sequencing data for specimens from four persons infected in the first outbreak and nine in the second. First, we will review the 2020 outbreak at Shelter A. The phylogenetic tree here, which displays the number of mutations on the x-axis, shows relatedness among the four outbreak sequences, including the one from our case under investigation for potential reinfection marked by the blue arrow. The first specimen was collected on May 22, 2020, and the last was the June 3, 2020 specimen of our case patient, all of which were closely related according to sequencing data, differing by only a couple of mutations. Next, we will review the October 2020 outbreak at Shelter B. This phylogenetic tree shows relatedness among the nine outbreak specimens, including the one from our patients suspected of reinfection. The date range of collection for these specimens was October 15, 2020 through October 23, 2020. Remember that sequences could only be obtained from nine of the 16 specimens collected from the cases in this outbreak. As with the other outbreak, these sequence data suggest that the cases were related. However, the longer branches within the cluster, which indicate more mutations between the viral sequences, could reflect an undersampling in the context of ongoing transmission. In summary, reinfection with SARS-CoV-2 appears to be rare. However, we still don't have much individual level information on how well immunity developed from a previous SARS-CoV-2 infection might protect against infection with a different viral variant. Most cases of reinfection documented so far have been in highly exposed populations undergoing routine testing, such as healthcare workers. Our case study shows that whole genome sequencing and epidemiologic data together can be helpful in confirming suspected cases of SARS-CoV-2 reinfection. The sequence data from specimens collected in June 2020 and October 2020 revealed clear differences in both clade and lineage assignments. Specific differences in mutation patterns also indicated that the two infections resulted from distinct viral genotypes. Alternatively, if the two sequence had been similar or nearly identical, we would have suspected instead that our case patient suffered from pers persistent infection. The sequencing results were consistent with epidemiologic data, which indicated that the patient had been exposed in two outbreaks of COVID-19 occurring more than three months apart in separate facilities. Persons experiencing homelessness may be at high risk for SARS-CoV-2 reinfection because of repeated exposures in multiple homeless shelters. In general, settings that bring people from the wider community into close proximity create the potential for re-exposure to SARS-CoV-2. This concludes module 2.5. Part two of this toolkit contains case studies that review the use of genomics in response to COVID-19. Please visit the COVID-19 Genomic Epidemiology Toolkit page where you can find further reading on this topic as well as a short survey to provide feedback about this module. On the toolkit page, you can also subscribe to our mailing list and receive announcements as new model modules and materials are released. Thank you.